Hi, I think this is working. And if you're watching, if you could say hi, then I'll know that it's over broadcasting to Patreon. And if it's not, then um, I'll have to fix it later. But um, I have a billion things to talk about. Um, my table, I'm sitting at my dining room table and my table is full of stuff that I want to talk about today. Um, <clears throat> I think these first few um, live streams that we do are going to be uh, packed full. And um, then as we get into spinning, after we've made all our decisions and we've, we're spinning along, I'll be talking about um, some other things that would be interesting while we're spinning. But of course, we've already done the hard work. I think the spinning is the fun work. So um, we're going to do the hard work this month. And then in March, we'll get going. So um, I'm wearing my tiara today. This is my uh, Princess Diana tiara. I actually forget what it's actually called. There's a name for it, but um, uh, Princess Diana is famous for wearing this, a tiara similar to this or um, anyway, because it's my birthday month and um, I'm uh, turning 53 this month and I get to go to Disney World. So that's awesome. Not for my birthday, really, but I'm pretending it's my birthday trip. So anyway, I'm going to talk to you about my thought process and how um, I'm going about this and what I'm going to talk to you about uh, may seem like it's too many choices, um, but I sort of already have it narrowed down in my mind and I'll tell you where I am with that at the end, but I want to show you where I started. So I have um, some processed wool. Well, let's start with the raw fleece first. Um, hey, I lost my lock. There it is. Okay, so I have some fleece. I have this is a washed uh, Corydale fleece. The locks are beautifully long. It's super soft. Uh, and Corydale is always on the top of my list as a favorite wool to spin, but I don't have a sweater out of Corydale. And so <clears throat> um, my first instinct with this fleece is to comb it because it's got some beautiful natural luster. And I think if I comb it, um, I can preserve that. It's a beautiful thing. If you've been in some of my breed study classes, I've uh, handed out Corydale from this particular shepherd. It's, um, I can't remember the guy's name. Oh, Rupert's Corydales. Um, I buy fleeces from them that are uncovered, but they have lots of beautiful covered fleeces too. I don't really care whether they're covered or not. Because, and also, look how clean that got. So he is a great shepherd. Uh, I also have this is, these are some uh, roll eggs. I have an entire Tunis fleece that I have hand carded. Tunis is also one of my top favorite fleeces. And I actually don't have any clothing made out of it. So, you know, that's also a big possibility, this, all these Rolex. So now here is my, I'm thinking that I would like to do this worsted. Um, this would obviously be wool and spun. I would do a short forward draw. No, I would do a supported long draw with this to get a nice fluffy light yarn. Um, so 
deciding between these two is really maybe going to be decided based on what pattern I want to do. Um, I also have some processed fibers that are always in the running. This is, I know you can't really probably tell what breed this is by looking at it, but um, this is Cheviot top. Uh, I just like Cheviot. It's, it's crisp. It's not coarse, but it's crisp. So this is going to be something that um, I think it would be beautiful for a cable sweater because of the, the way the yarn works up it whole it has a lot of body <clears throat> and so uh something with some stitch definition would be great on for cheviot and then of course here's some corydale um top and so i have plenty of it but if i'm going to choose corydale then i may as well go with that beautiful and that it's already washed. So the Corydale is kind of already out of the running. But so now I just showed you four wools that I'm thinking about, and they're all white. And you're probably just going, oh, Beth, white again, my word. Um, I can't help it. But I did go digging around in my closet for some stuff. And I have this uh, bag. Are the words backwards on there? Probably. It's cactus flower from Southern Cross Fiber and it's Cormo. I have had this for probably two years. I love the color. I love Cormo. Maybe I should do something and color, but I'm leaning toward the white and I'll tell you why in a second. But I also have this beautiful, um, this is also Southern Cross Fiber, six times four ounces, so I have 24 ounces, plenty for a sweater, called Tequila Sunrise. Um, this, the colors in here are awesome. I've also had this for a long time. Um, Texel. I love Texel. You know, they're those sheep. They look like, um, uh, they almost look like a cow face to me, Texel. Um, but their wool is awesome. Most people think of them as a, as a meat breed, but their wool is awesome. So that's everything. And I'll tell you right now at this point, I'm leaning toward the raw Corydale, except that the tunis is already processed. So, you know, how will I decide? I don't know. I don't know. But I have to decide soon. And to decide, I'll probably make some yarns from both of them the way I'm thinking about it. And then, uh, I don't know. Because I have a billion sweater choices, too. This is something, let me show you this. See that? That's Sarah Sweat. Sarah Sweat posted this picture on her blog in August of 2017. So it was last summer she posted this. She made this sweater. Um, she wanted to just knit. She had some yarn laying around. So she, she measured her bust and uh, loosely measured her bust she did a gauge swatch and she cast on the number of stitches at the bottom that would go around her bust. Now my hips are a little bit bigger than my bust area. So I would measure my hips and cast on there. But, um, this sweater, she, there's no pattern to it. So I sent her an email right after she posted this and asked her specifically what she did because I've only made one sweater without a pattern. It's something that I'm really interested in, but I'm such a weenie, like a giant, giant weenie. I don't know why. It's not like I can't use the yarn over again, except for this one uh, yarn that I'm weave or that I'm knitting with right now. You can't rip it out. But 
Um, my hand spun, I can rip it out if things go wrong, you know? And so, you know, I've been thinking about this pattern now for six months. It's not even a pattern. I've been thinking about this sweater. What she did was she had two, two three different co colors of yarn. She cast on at the bottom, knit up until she ran out. You know, she did the sleeves at the same time. When she ran out, she changed to this light color. When she ran out on the sleeve, she did this lighter color. This is, these are different. But what's wrong with just having a plain old white sweater that you can just throw on? That one, I'm really, I'm leaning towards that one. I, I should just try it, right? It's a really simple sweater. It's just stockinette in the round and around and around and around. Yeah, so her sweat, also she's my hero. But, hey, where's the other one? Oh, but, Look at that. Now, if I chose a white, uh, one of the white fleeces, and then when I got up to the spinning wheels, I have some uh, processed Jacob, or I have some merino, uh, that, you know, that silvery gray color merino that you can get the, the top, that would work. Um, I wouldn't need a lot of a different color for there. Um, and I wouldn't have to do this different color on the sleeves and the bottom. Um, but I sort of like this sweater because, you know, I haven't had great luck with my color work, though. Um, I have a Shetland, a Jameson sweater that I started to work on years ago. And um, Feral Knitter, you know her? She has that awesome color workbook out. She told me to rip it out because my, my floats are too tight and it's not gonna work once it's off the needles because I used a needle that was too short. And so my floats are too tight and it's gonna spread out when I take it off the needle. I needed to add another needle on there or something anyway. Um, and then I have these two other sweaters that are sort of similar. This one is by Elizabeth Lovick. Um, it's called the Catherine Bolero. I sort of like these shorter croppy kind of sweaters because of my body shape. I It's more flattering for me if, it, if the sweater stops right at the bottom of my ribs because that's my smallest part of my body. And a sweater that comes down like over my butt is just highlighting the place where I don't love it. So this is a really cute sweater and doesn't take that much yarn at all, like a thousand yards at the most. Um, so, you know, I could spin that really quickly. And then there's this one. This one I love. It's called Gabriella and it's designed by Kim Hargraves. It's in a book called Whisper. I don't own that book. so. And I looked on Amazon. Um, it looks like it's an out of print book and I found it for like $22, but you know, I have all these other patterns. So do I really need to buy a pattern? Somebody yesterday was talking about um, this, a sweater from this book, A Fine Fleece, the Rhinebeck sweater. I think that's in the front, let me. I should have found that before I, there he is. There's the Rhinebeck sweater. Um, it has, I don't know how much that's coming through. It has some definition that starts like right at the bust area, some stitch, stitch work, um, but it's a pretty simple and beautiful jacket type cardigan. But the sweater that I love in here is this. Look at that. It looks almost like an 80s kind of sweater. It's called Gaelic Mist. Um, that's a sweater that I've looked at a million times. And um, it uses uh, like a worsted weight yarn so that it would knit up pretty quickly. And the other thing that I love in this book is called 
um, two hearts. Um, I wouldn't use any of the dyed fiber for that sweater. Um, and it would work fine with both the Corydale and uh, the Tunis. So I don't know. I don't know, but I'll tell you. I think this is going to be it. I think I'm going to try just casting on. Now, later, she didn't like this, how it rolled up, and she added an edging that is really beautiful in a really dark brown. Um, and I was thinking, wouldn't it be beautiful with some lace around the bottom and around the sleeves? So I'm really leaning toward this one. I'm super leaning toward this. But you know, if I'm gonna make a simple sweater, then here's my problem. Here's my last problem. I bought these buttons when I was at SAF. They're sparkly. And when I saw them, I thought, wouldn't those be beautiful on just a plain white cardigan? Plain white cardigan, all these different buttons all down the front. I don't know. I, you're welcome to give me your opinion. Oh, yeah. Pink spinning wheels. I do have pink fiber already dyed in my collection. Pink spinning wheels. <sighs> Deco. Deco by Kate Davies. I don't know that one, but I'm going to look it up. And do you really think it's a good idea to give me more choices? <laughs> okay. So we sort of narrowed it down, right? I hope you guys are making some, like, are, you're narrowing things down. Um, we have plenty of time though. So like if, if you are fooling around with things and you get to sampling and you make a yarn, but, and you love the yarn and then you're not sure if it's going to work with the pattern, there's plenty of patterns out there and probably plenty of patterns at your house in the books that you own that you could find. Okay. Deco. I'm going to look that up. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Okay. So let me talk to you about sampling. Um, if you've been in a class with me, you've seen my samples, I don't take all of them to every class, but I bring a wide range of my samples to show how I go about the sampling. Um, I just have two bags out. See these? These are organza bags, organza bags that I buy from um, Oh my gosh, Alabama, no. It's some kind of wrapping paper place. It's a gift wrap uh, website. And they have these organza bags in all different sizes. And I just buy these, I have five different colors. The reason I have five colors is because of the way I categorize my fleeces is in five different um, categories. And so each color is for a different category. This is the fine wools. This is the long wools, so that when all of my, um, so that when all of my samples are all in one box, I don't have to look through every single bag to find the breed that I'm looking for. I can go right to the color bag that I know that the fleece, the category that the fleece is in. 
Um, so then it narrows it down a lot. And then I just look at those color bags. So here, let's look at the, my, this is my Romney samples. You can tell I like Romney a lot because I have a lot, a lot of samples. Some of these samples are from raw fleece. Some of these samples are from um, processed top. Um, it depends on why I was sampling and what I was doing with it. But um, everything, everything has a tag. See, everything's labeled. So I can go back. Now, some of these, like this one, is a sample from my book. So I didn't go into deep detail about every single thing, but I know um, what this sample goes with, which yarn it goes with. Um, see, this is sample number 553, and it was woven from uh, the yarn 552, which I'm not going to dig around and find right now. but. Um, that's not important. Here's what I want to talk about. So here, this label doesn't have enough information on it. It's a Rami, it's three ply, it's combed and dizzed, it's spun worsted, and it's knit from this particular yarn. But it doesn't have enough information for me to um, duplicate this yarn. But here's, here's a woolen sample. Okay, so here's a woolen, woolen spun right next to the worsted spun. See that? See how they look different from each other? See how this one's lighter in color and this one's darker? These are from the exact same fleece. Um, the reason that this one's lighter and this one's darker is because this yarn is more dense because it's worsted spun. This woolen spun is really airy and light, and so it lets more light through the yarn, and which means that um, it's gonna be a lighter color. This one's more yellow, this one's more white looking. Same fleece. Um, also, I don't know if you can see, this one's really a lot more fuzzy. This one's smooth and doesn't have as many fuzzy bits sticking out. Um, on this side, I did a little bit of rub test to see if it's gonna um, if it's gonna pill. That's important, um, depending on what you're making. If you're gonna make a sweater, oh my gosh. <laughs> You're not sorry at all. I can tell you're not sorry. And if you are, you've been sorrier. Anyway, so here's what I actually do. And you, I would love for you to do with this with every sample that you make. Normally, when I get a new fleece that I'm going to play with, if, if it's not one like Romney, where I've done a bunch of sampling before, um, I make like three to five samples, different processing methods if it's a fleece, um, different drafting methods, whether it's a fleece or fiber uh, or process fiber, three to five samples just to see what it's gonna do. It doesn't take a lot of time. Um, it's really actually really quick and you don't have to spin a lot of yarn. 10 yards is gonna give you a really good idea of what you're looking for. So here, this is the, the um, project that I'm working on right now. So this is Merino. This is, this is gonna be my next woven garment. I'm trying to get a yarn that I can set at about 40 ends per inch. The last one I think was 24 ends per inch. Um, and I love it, the dress, I love it. But I really want something like a summer weight wool. Um, so that's what I'm going for. Anyway, I don't know. I know all these words are backwards, but I'll tell you. This is, this. the top line is always what is it that I'm spinning, 18.5 micron merino. 
Uh-oh. There. Um, what wheel am I spinning it on? What bobbin whirl am I spinning it on? What flyer whirl am I spinning it on? So now you know I'm in double drive. Um, and it makes a difference which bobbin whirl and which flyer whirl you're in in double drive because it's going to change your take up and it changes the speed and everything. Um, I wrote on here that I'm in double drive, but it's obvious from these two notes here. Um, I'm doing a one and a half inch draft per one treadle and when i say one treadle i'm only thinking about one foot so each time each foot that means the fly or the drive wheel goes around one time each time i press that one foot and so i know i don't have my numbers written in here for what these whirl sizes are i don't know what those whirl sizes are all i need to know is what whirls i'm I have my drive bands in and what my draft is per treadle. And then I can reproduce this yarn. It doesn't matter what um, what ratio you're you're using, what are those numbers? Sometimes it matters, but for my purposes at this point, it doesn't matter. Um, and then short forward draw is my drafting method. So if I sit down at this wheel, I have this card. I can reproduce this yarn because here, these are my singles. So I wrap my singles around, tape them on the back. And then over here, this is a two ply and a three ply. Two ply and a three ply sample. So that when I go, um, I, this is gonna be a two ply yarn, but then if I wanted to make a three ply, if I wanted to make some kind of a beautiful, really fine gauge something or other, um, I can match the twist. This, these are just plyback samples that I made um, from fresh yarn right off the bobbin. So for every sample I make has a card like that, wherever the yarn is that goes with this two ply. 552, nope. See, this this is the yarn and it has a sample in here somewhere that goes with it. Um, so everything matches up. Um, I have lace sample. I have, oh, that's a beautiful thing. Here's some singles. Um, Here's another two ply. This, I don't know what, oh, you know, that was probably, that was from an article that I wrote for spinoff. And all I have written on here is Romney two ply, which I can look at it and see that it's Romney two ply. But I have no idea how I drafted this, what ratio I was on, what wheel I was on. I have no idea how to reproduce this yarn, even though it's beautiful. Ah. So here's the yarn by 48. Yes, here's the yarn that goes with this sample. So um, often though, often what I do is I make one card. I have my sample. I knit a small... This was for the book, so it's a little bit bigger than I would if I was just sampling. Um, that's what I need to tell you. From the three to five samples, you're going to knit a swatch that's small, tiny, um, two by two. What that's going to tell you is the hand of the fabric, if you're going to be able to, you know, sort of get where you want to be with that yarn. Um, so now you have five samples, all of them have a tiny swatch. Then when I pick one of those yarns that I think is going to work, I spin more 30, 40 yards and I make a bigger swatch. Um, so now I have my sample yarn and my swatch for this project. And, um, and I put that all together with the sample card that I made with the first yarn. Does that make sense? Is that, I, I hope this is making sense to you. 
Um, it's a, it's a little, it feels like it's a little bit of a process, but really, um, I can make those three to five samples in two hours ish. It's not that big of a process. Um, it doesn't take that much time when I'm, when I'm plying it. I rarely knit with, a. Oh my gosh, what do you call it? With a chain plied yarn. I rarely knit with a chain plied yarn. I just like um, a true three ply better. I just do. There's no reason for it other than I just like it. Um, so, but this is my point. But if I'm going to do a three ply yarn in my sweater, I know I'm going to make a three ply yarn in my sweater. Um, I will chain ply it for the sample because it doesn't make that much difference. It's not going to, you're still going to get an idea. Um, and then later on, if you don't want to chain ply your um, yarn for your project, you just make the three ply. But, and so it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference, but for sampling purposes, I just do a chain ply if I'm doing a three ply. If you're going to do a two ply, um, you know, just wind it and do um, ply from a center pull ball. Um, I don't, it's usually too much. I don't like to do too much in uh, Andean ply. I just don't, I just don't like to do more than a couple of wraps for Andean ply. Um, so I do a, a center pull ball, no problem. Um, now I have my pile of samples. I'm going to put it over here. Um, okay. Uh, does anybody have any questions who are watching? Anybody have any questions about, um, about the sampling process? I mean, you know, we have all these ways now to communicate. It's kind of awesome. We can be on, and I'm checking these places every day. We can do, um, we can do it on Patreon. We can be in the Slack channel. There's a great place to co communicate. And if you're not a, a Facebook person, it's completely private. Don't be afraid to go in there. It's just going to be our group in there. Um, and then we have Facebook where, um, it's only Patreon members on Facebook. And so um, I am going to try and figure out how to download this video and upload it to Facebook later. Um, but I think this is, this is kind of good. Now, next week, if you're at the um, tiara level or higher, um, people already started sending me some questions. I'm going to do a video, some demonstration. Um, I'm going to talk about some questions that people have about uh, the the process of deciding, but um, deciding on a yarn and deciding on a, a pattern. Um, make sure when you're doing your sampling that you're trying to spin a similar weight. Um, that's also going to be where those cards come in handy, where you wrap your singles. Because a lot of times, if you're using a, a wool that, a, you know, a tricky wool like Cormo, you can spin super fine and then you ply three ply and you've got this worsted weight yarn. So make sure that you do wrap your singles around so you can. Um, reproduce them or if your yarn is too fat that you can go back and make sure that your your new yarn that you're spinning is finer than the last sample even if you love how the sample turned out maybe you just want it to be finer maybe you just want it to be thicker so that sample card of the sample that you like is going to come in handy to make the yarn that's going to work in your sweater um, once you start, 
once you get to the yarn that you like and you think it's going to work, and then you spin your next sample, that's when you're going to want to go to uh, try out all your knitting needles and see if you're going to get gauge. There's a huge range of needles that you can use with one yarn. And so don't rely on the pattern to tell you what needle size to use. You want to make sure that you get the numbers. Or if you're super smart and good, then you can, you know, rearrange the pattern to make it work with the gauge that you're getting. But that's not me. I got to match the gauge because the whole sweater design and sizing thing is a mystery to me. Um, okay. That's good. I'm going to be around. I hope you guys have a good day. And I hope um, that you'll ask me questions. I'm happy to help however I can. And I, I need to get spinning. But I keep looking at that merino over there on the wheel because I want to get that on the loom. And, you know, I have those towels that I didn't finish weaving yet. And they got to get off the loom. <gasps> and I got to figure out what I need to take to ply. So I hope this was helpful. I hope everybody um, learned something. And I hope that if you were feeling a little bit nervous, that you feel better. Um, oh, somebody had a question that said, how much fiber would you recommend setting aside for sampling? Um, that is a really good question. <laughs> I like to have, um, for these small samples, like a 10th of an ounce is gonna do it, really. Usually a 10th of an ounce is gonna do it. Um, almost always, you can get what you need from two ounces of fiber. Plenty of, um, you can get a big enough sample from two ounces of fiber. Um, and still have some yarn left over and every, and that's enough to keep together then for your sample co collection. Um, but two ounces is usually plenty. If you're going from a raw fleece, make sure you double that. You're gonna need about four ounces. Um, not always, but four ounces is safe. And then when you wash it, if it's a Romney, you're gonna lose way less than, you know, if you're washing, uh, um, Merino or Rommeldale or something really greasy. <laughs> anyway, if you need, also let me know if you need um, some, if you're having trouble, if you're washing a fleece, if you're having some trouble with that, let me know and um, I'll give you some advice. But, you know, I do have that um, blog post that I made a long time ago about scouring wool that just shows step by step my process for scouring. So, Anyway, it's 1.30. I got to get ready. I'm going to a hockey game tonight again. So thanks for watching and ask me questions. I'm happy to answer and happy to help. I'll talk to you soon.